Hey everybody, this is Gary of the OK Modeler channel and welcome to episode 15 of the USS New Jersey build. In this episode, I'm going to be working on the fire control and radar system of this ship. And there's a lot to do, so let's go ahead and get started here. First thing I'm going to work on is getting these Mark 38 uh, radar or fire control system uh, ready to go. Um, we got photo etch parts that I already clipped out here. There's, I believe there's what, oh gosh, maybe 20 pieces for both of them. So 10, of, 10 each, well, maybe 23, well, 24. Yeah, anyways, so the first thing I need to do is get these uh, legs clipped out because we won't be needing those. We'll get those replaced with the photo etch parts. And just like, And there it goes. Just like that. All right, I'll get those cleaned up and get those photo etch parts added to the base right there. All right, folks, I got the Mark 38 put together, or some of it, most of it. Well, some of it, I should say. Uh, so far, I got the brass piece that goes right here along there and then the support that holds the mark 13 radar i think that's what it's called um i did create a little jig to kind of get the the mark 13 level right there with the with the support on each side and i'll go ahead and show that jig to you right now it's pretty rudimentary i should say all right, folks, here's my fancy jig that I did that I put together for my MK-13s here. Uh, basically, it's just a sanding stick that I used. But anywho, it gets me, it's like a third hand, helps me uh, keep this radar up in place in a nice position that I need to. So, it's it's kind of a crude jig but it works right um also i had to add some styrene pieces over here on each side because when i put the uh, the brass parts together it seemed to be a lot wider now i'm not sure maybe because i sanded this too much or whatnot but it just didn't work so i just had to put a filler in there to help it to actually make that part work all right, so with my little fancy jig here, all I gotta do is add a little glue. And that is it. So I'll let that dry and hopefully it stays on. All right, moment of truth. Here we go. All glued in and secured. There we go. So, if you like my jig, I can send one to you. I'm just kidding. So I got these done here. I still need to add a little detail on there, but I'll do that off camera. All right, so next step, I'm gonna work on the MK37s. Okay, on to the MK-37 directors. I believe the MS says it's for Missouri and not for the New Jersey. So, well, I mean, okay, I'm not sure what Pontos is telling me here, but that looks a little fishy here. At least the parts are a little consistent right here. So, I ended up going ahead and getting all my photo etch parts all cut up. And I also bent them as well to get them ready so I can do a fast, easy assembly, like a, an assembly line. And then I looked at my package that came with my upgrade set, that my Pontos upgrade set, and these MK37s are not exactly what I expected. 
here they are. They got little six little doors or five little doors on here. And I said to myself, these don't look right. I'm not sure what exactly is going on. And the kit piece isn't any better. So I pulled out a reference uh, from the USS Iowa here. This one right here, the Battleship Iowa by uh, Stefan Dramansky. And I pulled up to here and this is what Pontos somewhat kind of gave me a similar one of this one from World War II or maybe from the 45 to 55. So into World War II to Korean War. What I need is this format based on all the pictures that I've seen on the interwebs on the New Jersey YouTube video. They had something similar like this. This I believe is what I needed and this one ran from 1955 to 1990 so that is in the time period that um, I'm building from the 1982. So I had to go and get an upgrade for my upgrade parts. So I went on the interweb on the internet here and went to modelmonkey.com. Is it dot com or dot net? Well, I'll put the link down below. And here it is. This is what I got. Uh, a 3D piece right here, which is accurate for this time period that I'm working on. It's unfortunate that I had to get, I had to spend a little more money to get the correct part. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this one, but here you can tell the difference right here. Obviously, outside of the colors, you see the, the difference between the two here. So I just cleaned these up here. I'm going to let it dry and then we'll start working, getting all the photo etch parts attached to this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put one of these Mark 37 directors together on video here. So I already glued the foundation or this first uh, foundation here. Uh, it's fairly simple. It just glues back here. You have a little, maybe it's hard to see right there, but two little points where the back will glue and it's kind of like a guiding point right there. All right, so the next step here is to add this piece and it goes on top of this, like so. Um, obviously you want a holes to match up. It's hard to see, you see the holes right there. I'm trying to get those matched up. So let's see if I can accomplish that on video. Hopefully I didn't add too much to clog the hole here. There we go, not bad. Not bad at all. I'm probably going to fiddle around with it. All right. Might look a little crooked, but I think now the glue is set in. All right. Let that dry. And then next thing you want to do is fold the support down and go like that. Like so. Now you can tell it's not really straight at all. All right, well, it is what it is. I, I accept that this is going to look almost OK. So it looks a little crooked, but you know, I think I'm just going to accept it the way it is. I'm just not going to take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, and you know, you just try your best on this. I'll add a little glue here and secure.
secure that. got the platform put in on the MK37 and we'll go ahead and put the satellite dish on here hopefully the spot will fit in there hopefully the dish will fit in there I got rid of the white paper I wasn't sure if that's helping you blinding you I don't know and if you hear fireworks behind me that's the 4th of July I should have mentioned that earlier happy birthday America all right, um, so next step I'm gonna do here is putting this Mark 25 dish or antenna dish right here. And there's three pieces. So we got this piece, looks kind of like a little T or a little, little pistol here. And that goes into the little hole that is behind the antenna and I said this might w not work before but you know it proved me wrong so we'll just go ahead and squeeze that in there I'll try this off camera. All right, everything's dry now. So let's go ahead and see if I can get this uh, this antenna onto the director here. This piece has three pieces here. So you have that one I showed you last night. Now it's morning. You got the dish, and then there's a I guess you, a locking pin, I guess you could say, but it, it goes in pretty well. So not too bad. All right, we'll just go ahead and put this in here into some super glue. Move my hand around a little bit and let's see if I can get this in a little hole here. go in the back there you go all right well I'll just go ahead and, you know it looks a little down but um, it's sufficient so I'll let that cure and then the next thing I gotta do is add the ladders and we'll be done with just this one director here. All right, let's see if I can get the ladder put on here. Get myself positioned. Put a blob of glue on there. There's one. Hopefully I'm not too greedy and put the glue down here. All right, I'll let that dry. All right, time to put the ladder on the other side. I thought I was done. I gotta put the the antenna part on here. This little tiny piece right here. 
So my advice is try not to lose this one. Fortunately, Pontos gives you an, a couple extra ones. I'll check to see if it's straight, but it looks fairly good. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I got it all done. It's just one of four right here. I think I got the antenna thing right. So, looks pretty good. I just got to paint it. Well, I got to finish the three other ones, but hopefully this will give you guys an idea how this goes together with this particular model monkey product. So, uh, all right, I'm gonna get working on the next three and I'll be right back. All right, all my directors have been finished, not painted yet. I haven't gotten time to paint. The weather's been pretty warm, so I'm just waiting for a little cooler day here. But this is the alignment that I have. Uh, I got this one, it's gonna go above the bridge. And then these two are besides uh, funnel number one, and this one's at the rear. Um, I also have the uh, this portion, the support for the MK38. If I remember, that's the name. Uh, anyways, that is complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those painted when the weather turns nice, or a little cooler, I should say. Now the next step I'm going to do is going to work on the main mass right here. And this is the part of the episode where it's going to be a little more labor intensive. There's a lot more parts because I also have the low frequency antenna that I have to work on, which is on another instruction page right here. Oh, including on the main mass, I have to put the mass on here too. And then I got the satellite or the radar right here, all right there. And the DCG antenna, this part, all of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the easy part and work on the main mass. So let me go ahead and get those parts ready and I'll get working on it. All right, it's been a few days. So what happens when you have kids that don't feel so good, but it is what it is, right? But anyways, I got all my pieces or most of my pieces laid out right here. Um, the first step I'm gonna do is work on this, get that put together, and then put the detail parts on there afterwards. And for me to do this, I'm gonna have to go ahead and put this brass piece set right here, this one, that goes right in the middle like that. That should be fun. So first things first, I gotta make sure that this piece fits with the kit piece. It fits. All right, so first step I'm gonna do is glue these uh, support brackets for the main mass here. I'm using this uh, dental pick to act as kind of a more of a third or fourth hand that I need to get the, the two parts to come together like this. And I guess the idea is trying to get close enough so I can go ahead and put that brass rod right here onto this. So let's go ahead and add the extra thin here. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and let this set for a little bit, and then I will try to finagle it to make it fit with this. <laughs> all right, so I got that piece all glued up. I guess my jig, I didn't really need to use it, but that's okay. Um, I used the Tamiya thin set, or thin glue over here and over here. So now I got a good connection, and hopefully that everything looks straight so far. And now the next piece I'm gonna do is put this brass piece right here. So let's go ahead and get working on that. 
All right. First thing I find my stuff here. Here we go. All right. Hopefully I'm adding enough glue there. And for good measure. All right. I think that takes care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this sit and cure for a little bit. And we'll see how that goes or how this turns out. So as I wait for the mass to dry, I'm going to work on the platform here. Basically what we're going to do here is put these two pieces together. Basically this goes on top of that. All right. So I did a little practice run here and to make sure that I make everything look straight here and no, no errors or anything like that. I use this little jig here. It's a, Office Max binder clip with toothpicks on there. So what I do is I'm just going to go ahead and slide that right here. It's engineered for perfection. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my glue on here. Oops. Go ahead and add my glue on there and then just plop that on top. Try not to get the glue too close over here because then the toothpicks will get stuck. So let's go ahead and try this. Slip it on like that. Push down. that the glue set in on around the toothpicks got lucky there all right so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this let this cure and hopefully it'll be secured all right so next step here is gonna go ahead and put this railing on here so Let's go ahead and dab a little bit of glue. Let's hope I can get this on right. go perfect look on the next step here Gotta make sure I try to line these holes up perfectly. It's kind of hard to see here, but hopefully I got it lined up here. Let me go ahead and check under the lights here. Yes, the holes lined up. That's a victory right there. this last piece on for this platform and we are 
one step closer to the finish on this with many more steps to go. I probably put too much glue on here. That's okay. All right, well, slightly off the mark, but nonetheless, all done. So, now, what's the next step? All right, so I was able to go ahead and glue the platform to the main mass right here. Um, you know, it, it took some kind of guesswork because I wanted to make sure that it was straight going this way towards the bow and not crooked or anything like that. And I think I got that accomplished. Oh, there that, there goes that. I think I got that accomplished. Um, I did notice that the main mass doesn't quite fit over here to the bottom. It's just missing these, these points right here. You can see it's just, just sticking out and it's something I'm not really thrilled about. Um, the problem is that the Pontos kit with the, the funnel is getting in the way of the, the support structure. So let me go ahead and show you that here. And let me go ahead and take it apart. So you can see it's pretty tight. It's like, you know, using your legs to hold a basketball. And what it's doing, it's rubbing the paint off of this. And now I know why people tend to put a, a matte coat or a clear coat or something like that to prevent issues like, like this. Um, also, another thing that you know I talked about earlier about the, the mass, you, it's got to be precise. And it all starts with this support structure right here. And, I noticed that I am slightly off. I don't know if I can get this focused here. Just off a, a little bit here. You can tell right here, you see the, the gaps right there. Right here. I'm just, you know, I put it on slightly off. You can see it's filled here, but not over here. So that means that my support right here is slightly crooked or twisted a little bit. So to compensate that, um, when I put the platform on, um, it's slightly twisted as well or crooked on purpose. You can see there's a guide line right here. And you can see there's a, a gap of the, of the polished brass right there and you can see so I'm just off just a little bit but I guess you can say I'm compensating because of the failure of me getting this on correctly this brass support right here on correctly but when I hopefully when I put it all in together everything should be straight and almost perfect almost yeah so, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this uh, soup, uh, the main mass here. And I got some railings to put on there. I got the radar to do. So I'll be right back and keep working on this. All right, so I got my platform done here. Uh, it took some time, but, uh, and I dropped it once, so I had to fix it. I hopefully don't wanna drop this again. Anyways, um, Here's how it looks. It doesn't look too bad. Um, this was fairly easy to put the railings on. It took some time, but not too bad. So I'm happy how it turned out. Now on this piece right here, there was a photo etch, um, I guess, support that was attached to, let me actually move it here. It was attached to this piece right here, but it fell short. So I cut the piece off and replace it with the styrene piece here. 
as you can see, whoop, there we go, right there. So it'll, it's good enough. I think it looks a lot better than what the photo etch part was on there. So all I did is just glue it and I think it looks good enough. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. The next step I'm gonna do is work on the mass that goes right here, right there. Let me go ahead and put this away so it doesn't get destroyed. All right, so the main mass consists of these parts right here. I'm not sure why they labeled it this way, but they all seem like the same thing, but I'm just gonna go with it. And some bending here, obviously. So let's go ahead and uh, get to work on that. All right, so I got all the pieces for the main antenna cut out and folded as well. The way the number system works here is 215 is going to be at the base of the antenna or close to the base on the bottom. And then we just kind of work all the way to the top to number 213. So going left to right, kind of like a totem pole, You're just stacking things up. Now, I mentioned before that these pieces here, like 217, 216, 17, 18, 20, and 19, all look the same. But the reason they're all numbered differently is the hole in the middle are different sizes. So you don't want to get these out of order. That's why I wrote these out on a envelope here so I can get these in the proper order. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on these, put these together on the main mast, and I'll be right back. All right, folks, I got my uh, antenna here for the main mast all complete, almost complete, but still need to paint this. As you can see, it's just all brass right now. Um, I would have to say that these parts right here, these small little square things right here, pretty difficult, a lot more difficult than I expected. And I think uh, it might not be as accurate in terms of spacing wise, but you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and live with it. It is what it is. So now I got that complete. I'm gonna hold off and get that painted later. Set this aside so it doesn't fall over. And the next step is to work on the radars here. All right, so I got the SPS 49 radar here and the SPS 10 over here. And first thing you're gonna work on is the bigger one, the SPS 49 right here. Um, I did anneal this one here. Uh, I used a combination of electric coil heat burner as well as a lighter to help anneal it. So hopefully that will work. Let's go ahead and start working on this one and it should be fun. All right, so one of the challenges for the SPS 49 is just trying to get this, at least challenges for me, is trying to get this curvature to work form, work with the photo etch, this right here. Now you could get one of those, uh, just kind of roll it on there, but you know, that seems fairly easy. It's this part right here. You see how it curves right here? That is a challenge that I don't know exactly how I can get that to be exact. That I don't know. This part is easy. It's this part with this is gonna be the hard part, but you know, I'm willing to try some things here. So on the previous New Jersey build that I did a few years ago, I took the, the kit part right here and then took the photo etch part and just kind of mashed it in there, um, not knowing what to do at the time. And I guess it worked okay, but you know, if it worked okay, I mean, there's gotta be a reason why I'm doing this all over again is, well, I think I could do better, right? So what I'm gonna do here is, I already started working on this here. I'm just 
put this on a mouse pad, if anyone ever uses mouse pads anymore, and a marble. And what I'm gonna do here is just kind of just gently roll back and forth, hoping that one, I will get both curvatures to what I like. Now, I can understand that this could lead to undesirable results, but mm, let's see how this works, right? We've got the curve, it's a little uneven. Do we have a curve on the side? Let's see. Not quite. So let's see if I can, maybe I need to be a little more aggressive. Just don't wanna. Destroy it, you know? I think we might be getting a small curve here. Not a whole lot. The curve on the side right here, but hard to say. I don't know if you can see, but it looks like I might be getting some sort of curve. I think you, I think I'm close enough here. This might be good enough here. So I'm gonna just call it good right here. Yeah, all right. I think we might be good on that. All right, well, it took a few days, but I finally got my SPS 49 all done here. Uh, as you saw previously, getting this radar to be shaped correctly took a little time to work on, but mostly it's this the support that goes back here on the on the radar. It took a long time you trying to make sure that it fits right, and get it all the points connected to the radar. It provides the the nice solid foundation because I dropped this a couple times and it's still stuck together so that's a good thing all right so and I also got the SPS 10 the smaller one it's just basically three pieces um, the radar the support and the, the bracket that that goes behind the the radar itself so now that I got these two complete, I can go ahead and start putting these on the main mast right here, which I already put the, <clears throat> the base for the two radars right there. And I got some antennas to put on here. So I'll go ahead and put those together and we'll see the final results here pretty soon. All right, folks, I got the main mast all complete here. It a lot of work went into it, uh, yeah, but the detail is pretty impressive as you can tell right here. Now, as you can tell, I painted, already got this primed and ready for paint. Unfortunately, because the weather has been pretty warm and I paint in the garage, so that means my garage is way too hot for me to paint. And you know, last thing I want to do is 
use the airbrush and then the second the paint comes out of the out of the nozzle it just dries instantly and then I get that sandpaper effect which is not something I would like to have on this particular piece so I'm gonna go ahead and just put it aside or at least put it on the ship for a dry fit and hopefully get this painted soon well here's everything all dry fitted together the main mass is attached to the to the uh, conning tower there and as I, I got my directors also put in as well which are here and here I didn't put the one back here yet uh, that's fine you can imagine what it would look like there um, I would have to say the main mass uh, a lot of work goes into this if you were to do the Edward set one um, you would basically use the kit part and just the radars would be the pretty much the enhanced parts right there but um, you know you can't go wrong with either one with the Edward or the Pontos one and I would have to say the the kit part is pretty good at, at, as its own but you know the radar is the radar you can't kind of mold a radar out of plastic it's kind of hard to do but anyways um, a lot of work went into this this mass specifically and these directors a lot of pieces were put together and that's why this episode took a long time and doesn't help also that kids got sick and then you know work life balance is kind of hard these days and the weather here where I live has been pretty hot so painting it has been a big issue but hopefully I'll get to the painting part on the next episode on the next episode speaking of which so on the next episode I'll be working on this section of the ship here I'm gonna go ahead and try to add this uh, aerodynamic bowl nose here as well as the NTDS antenna that goes right here which is this conical shape that sits right here and I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of the the vents as well as I think these bullards I think that's what they're called a lot of small pieces to go I mean it's gonna slow this build down but it's going a lot slower than I was hoping anyways but anyways um, Hopefully you liked this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comment section below. Thanks a whole lot for watching this video and you know, patience as I tr slowly try to finish this build here. Um, if you haven't, please subscribe to this channel. That'd be greatly appreciated. Until then, I will see you all on the next episode.